Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go ahead and talk about related rates. So this is one of the two most important applications we will see to the real world in calculus. So let's go ahead and investigate what exactly these problems are. So as you may have surmised from the name related rates, they do indeed involve relating two different rates of change with each other. So for example, uh, you could talk in biology about predator-prey models, where the growth rate of the predator population and the growth rate of the prey population definitely have a relation to each other. Uh, one in physics would be relating the change in kinetic energy with the change in velocity. So as you accelerate or decelerate, your kinetic energy is either increasing or decreasing, and that's something else you could look at relating to different rates of change. Uh, so these show up all over the place in the real world and are really useful overall. And the second thing and why we're talking about it now in calculus is that these require implicit differentiation with respect to time. So as mentioned, we're relating rates of change, and these are all with respect to time. So our variable, even if there is, so kinetic energy, right, this depends on velocity, so you naturally have time showing up there, but in general... If you see something like the rate of change of the side length of a triangle affecting the area, you may not be thinking derivative with respect of time right away. So it's always good to keep in mind we're taking the derivative with respect to t. Okay, so before we dig into an example, let's talk about the general strategy for these type, types of problems. So these are always word problems for the most part, and so we want to have kind of a plan of attack before we go. So first, you want to try to draw a picture and label it. So here, by label it, I mean you want to be assigning variables. So if you're talking about a triangle, then you want to say, you know, base and height. And so you would just label them, you know, B and H. And so this is going to help us define a function down the road. Okay, then you want to write down what you know. So the given information. So maybe you know one of the rates and you want to figure out the other. We want to start with what we know. Okay, next you want to write down the goal or what you want, you know, in the problem and, and not in life here. Uh, so then that will give you a direction on the problem and then we can figure out how to get there using what we know. Next you want to actually write down an equation that relates the two quantities. So here, in order to figure out the relation between the rates, we need to relate the two quantities in general. So this may be writing the area of a triangle in terms of the side lengths, right, the base and the height. Um, this could be the volume of a circle in relation to its radius. This could be the kinetic energy in terms of the velocity, anything like that. And then once we have this equation, we'll implicitly differentiate it with respect to t. So you want to take d dt of both sides. And then the last step is simply to solve. Right, this is where we, we have our equation with the two rates. We can write down what we know. We substitute that in, and we're going to be able to figure out our end goal. Okay, so here's the classic first example a lot of people see. It's the ladder sliding down a wall. So suppose you have a 20-foot ladder up against a wall, and it's sliding down. We want to know how fast is the top sliding down the wall when the bottom of the ladder is 12 feet away from the wall on the floor and sliding away at five feet per second. All right, so first things first, we should draw a picture. So here's our wall, here's our ladder, and let's go ahead and label things. So distance away on the floor, we'll call that X. Distance on the wall, we'll call Y, and we'll say our ladder length is Z. Well, what do we know? We know that z is 20, right? This is a 20-foot ladder. We know that it is moving away on the bottom at 5 feet per second. So this is the rate of change of x. And so we would write this dx dt, right? It's the rate of change over time per second. And in this case, since it's going away from the wall, this distance is increasing, so it's positive 5. If it was moving closer to the wall, right, it would be negative 5 there. And then what's our goal? Our goal is to find the rate that the top is moving down 
So we want to find dy dt at one specific moment in time. So we want to know that when x is 12, or the distance from the wall on the bottom is 12. Okay, so our next step is to write down an equation relating these things. So somehow, somehow we have to relate the x and the y variables. So we have a triangle here. We have a few options. Uh, so area is something that we have with a triangle, right? Base and height are x and y here. But we don't know anything about the area. So it doesn't seem that is good. On the other hand, we do know the hypotenuse. And since we know that, how can we relate all three sides? That would be the Pythagorean theorem. And so that seems like a better candidate here. So x squared plus y squared is z squared. And in this case, z is 20. So we can actually just go ahead and fill this guy in and write 400. Okay, next step is to implicitly differentiate with respect to t. So in this case, right, with variable t, we're doing this for both x and y. So we have 2x dx dt, 2y dy dt, and then the derivative of 400 is, of course, 0. So we want to find dy dt. We have x, right? x is 12. We have dx dt. That's 5. Our issue is that we have two unknowns over here. We don't know why yet. So how can we figure that out? Well, we can actually use the Pythagorean theorem, right? We know x, we know z at that time. So when x is 12 and z is 20, we have 12 squared plus y squared is 20 squared. So that's 144 on the left, that's 400 on the right. So y squared is 256. And this means y is 16. You could also see this from knowing 3, 4, 5 triangles. And this is just multiplying each side by 4. Okay, and so then we can write 2 times 16 here. dy dt is 0. And then the last step is to subtract over and divide to get dy dt by itself. Okay, so 2 times 12 times 5 is 120. So we have negative 120 when we subtract that over and we divide by 2 times 16 or 32. And so our velocity in the y direction is negative 120 over 32 feet per second. So it's moving downward at 120 over 32 feet per second. Okay, so let's do another example. So suppose we have an expanding cube with side lengths increasing at a rate of three inches per second. How fast is the volume of the cube increasing at the time when sides are four inches? So of course, with a cube, all sides are the same length. And in this case, all we really know is the rate at which these are changing. So let's just label all of these side lengths x. So we know that dx dt is three. And we want, if we call volume V, we want the rate of change of volume, so we want dV dt at the moment in time when x is 4. Well, how do we relate these? Well, that's just going to be by the volume equation. So the volume is just length times width times height, or in this case, x cubed. We then implicitly differentiate. So dV dt is 3x squared dx dt. And we already know everything here. So we know x is 4 in this case, and dx dt is 3. So we have 3 times 16 times 3. This is going to be 144. And in this case, right, our rate of change would be cubic feet per second, because it's volume. OK, so I'm going to only have you do one exercise this time. So I want you to do the same ladder example roughly but now make it a 13 foot ladder instead of 20 foot ladder. And I want you to still find the rate the top is moving down when the bottom is 12 feet away, but now it's sliding out at eight feet per second. All right, thanks for watching.